a really sad day for the world of gaming. One of the most influential figures in the history of gaming is no longer with us. But what he would want us to do is to keep doing what we love, continuing to enjoy our games, continuing to review them, continuing to do podcasts like this. And that's exactly what I'm doing today. Shout out as always to Boomerang Rentals. Packages start from as little as £3.99 a month. Sign up today, get a 21 day free trial with three free game rentals as well. There are no late fees. You can keep the game as long as you like or keep it forever at a discounted price on the online store. BoomerangRentals.co.uk, the best place to rent your games. As you saw at the beginning of the video, the podcast, there was a tribute on Warframe in memory of the great John Peter Bain, otherwise known as Total Biscuit. One of the most influential personalities, not just in YouTube, but in gaming as a whole. So here we go. This is what the article says on Polygon. Game critic John Bain, more commonly known by the aliases Total Biscuit and the Cynical Brit, died today after a protracted battle with cancer, according to tweets from his official account and his wife's account. His wife's account. Bain was 33. Bain revealed in 2014 that he had been diagnosed with cancer and was receiving chemotherapy and radiation treatment. In 2015, Bain announced that his cancer was terminal. Though he continued to work on his popular YouTube channel and the co-optional podcast, earlier this year, Bain announced he was retiring from game criticism, saying that conventional treatment methods had become ineffective. Bain's career, as a cr cre Bain's career as a game critic and personality spanned more than a decade. He gained prominence for his coverage of PC software and for professional casting of games like StarCraft 2 and PlanetSide 2. His YouTube channel, which was home to Total Biscuit's podcast and Game Impressions, had more than 2.2 million subscribers. Bain was also a top Steam curator garnering more than 800,000 followers. A really sad day for gaming. Rest assured, he will never be forgotten. Without people like John, people like me wouldn't be as invested in gaming as I am now.
right? So let's get into the news. This is uh, inside the making of a game by Platinum Games. The world of Demons. The initial conversation uh, between uh, Platinum and myself uh, started a little over three years ago um, when I brought them a very simple kind of two-page uh, uh, concept, which was, uh, can we do a uh, full-fledged uh, action game that would work on a touch device that didn't feel like it was shoehorned in or compromised in any way. Now that's a big challenge, um, but I could think of no better uh, developer in the world to handle that than uh, than Platinum. え、あの、そういう単純にしたものっていうのは基本的にはないです。uh, really all it was was action on a touch device with using a sword. Um, and they really took that ball and ran with it, uh, and, and then they proposed this world, the samurai versus yokai, uh, this um, setting of ancient Japan, this art style using uh, all of these traditional uh, uh, art methods as well. And that to me was just like, I mean, it doesn't get any better than that, so I was just eating it up. Uh, and from that point, we really um, collaborated closely um, with the goal of making something that's more than the sum of its parts. え、墨絵っていう風に水墨画っていう、っていうところで、そこでやったあの浮世絵っていうま、日本の古い、えっと、for me, it was really important that this be an original IP, that this be something that both uh, uh, of our companies could have ownership over, and most importantly, something that Platinum could point to and say, this is um, a, you know, a, a title that we worked on that's equal to any other. Um, and their philosophy of being platform agnostic and, and uh, uh, really making the absolute best experience they can, no matter what the platform, really fit in that vision. ま、我々が今までやってきたことと全く違う知識を持っている、そういう企業さんとやることによって、あ、こういうふうにすればいいんだっていう勉強になったりとか、なんだろうな。ま、得た知識っていういただいたその情報っていうのがすごく我々もこ
uh, elements that will help the game succeed when it's after it's released into what we call a live uh, operations period. The time after a game is released when we're bringing out new content every month, how to keep that fresh, how to keep that interesting, and most importantly, how to build elements into the game initially that will link to that and allow people to have an action experience that's very uh, true to this um, idea of sort of this uh, reflex-based action gameplay, but also has enough customization, enough improvements, and enough uh, uh, RPG-style elements to it that you can play that continuously uh, for as long as you're supporting it with, with various content. So that's really what we brought to the table. And we're really excited that uh, the past three years of work uh, that Platinum has put into the game is now coming to fruition and we can show it to everybody. So I uh, really hope that you look forward to it. <laughs>Demons looks like it's a mobile game as of yet there's not really much in the way of details regarding it so we don't know what's going to happen with it as of yet what we do know is that it's going to be done by Platinum Games and they've got a very impressive track record I mean Neo Automata, Bayonetta series even Metal Gear Rising Revengeance Wow, I mean, right. So here we go. On to the next news article. Early Dark Souls cut content creepy as hell. Ooh, boy, this will be interesting. Dark Souls detective Lance McDonald is an indie developer turned hobbyist game engineer. He spent the last few months uncovering cut content from Hidetaka's, Miyaz Hidetaka Miyazaki's Twisted Action RPG series. Which has led us to believe Osiro's baby wasn't always invi invisible. And that Pontif Sullivan may have once been Dark Souls 3's final boss. Dark Souls Remastered appears to have launched on Steam a day early. And McDonald has in turn entered Lordran. As revealed on his Twitter feed, the Soulsborne sleuth discovered 17 unused map files which contain a host of pre-release assets. They're in the early they're in the earliest of states, but it's never but it's nevertheless cool to catch a glimpse from behind from software's curtain. Not about that. Wow. Oh, how's about this? We finally have official details on Battlefield 5 as it was announced just yesterday. For PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. So what I'm going to do now... ...is...
right, so here we go. The Battlefield 5 review trailer. Here we go. I'm going to make the appropriate setting changes. Here we go. Still Frostbite 3 engine. Let's try again. Because like they still the Frostbite 3 engine. Oh, my word. No way you should have survived that for sure. Hey goody, we actually go into Silver. Wow. A cutscene into multiplayer gameplay. That's actually quite a cool transition. I'm not talking about crazy yay, but given difficult circumstances, especially today. Yeah, definitely shouldn't have survived that one. Bat with barbed wire. Games play best on Xbox One. Wow. A much darker variation on the Battlefield 5 theme. How's about that? Well, like I say, the, the transition from what appeared to be the cutscene into some multiplayer was very interesting. I'll give that a give that a play when it comes out. Talking of which. Let's actually put it onto my rental list. Hmm. 
Hmm. Uh, doesn't look like we have. Doesn't look like uh, Boomerang. Doesn't look like Boomerang Rentals has it up yet on their uh, coming soon section on the uh, the website. But nevertheless, let's see what we have. EA and DICE gave the world its first look at the newest installments in the Battlefield series, Battlefield 5, during a big live stream presentation. Along with revealing the first details about the game's setting and features, the publisher announced when the highly anticipated shooter will hit the market, October 19th, a week after Call of Duty Battle Royale. I know I shouldn't be making jokes like that, but <laughs> you might as well call it Call of Duty Battle Royale at this point. Like many contemporary titles, Battlefield 5 will launch in two packages. The standard edition retails for $60 and will be available on the aforementioned date, while the $80 deluxe edition gives players access to the title three days early on October 16th. The latter also includes five sets of paratrooper outfits, an assortment of special assignments and 20 weekly airlift supply drops, each of which contains one customization item. As previously rumoured, Battlefield 5 takes place during World War II, making it the first installment to be set during the conflict since 2009's Battlefield 1943. It is also the first game since Battlefield 3 to feature a co-op campaign called Combined Arms, which allows up to four players to work together on missions. Like Battlefield 1, the upcoming installment boasts a single-player War Stories campaign. During the same livestream, EA also revealed that it won't be offering a premium DLC pass for Battlefield 5 as it did for Battlefield 1. Instead, the publisher will roll out a regular schedule of post launch content to all players for free as part of its Tides of War live service. However, players will still be able to purchase cosmetic items in the game. Battlefield 5 is coming to PS4, Xbox One P and PC via Origin. Players will have the chance to try the game ahead of its launch on October 11th through the EA Access Play First trial. You can read more about the upcoming shooter in our roundup of everything we know about Battlefield 5. So no premium pass, and only cosmetic items and loot boxes. About time EA did something right. I'll definitely be trying it out. Take it from there. Here we go. Sony isn't done with portable gaming just yet. It's thinking about many options. All right. So here we go. Sony may not be making great strides with its PlayStation Vita, but that doesn't mean the company is giving up on port the portable gaming market just yet. Speaking to Bloomberg, the newly appointed head of PlayStation, John Codera, said that Sony is still experimenting with portable and mobile gaming, and that it still has a place in the company's future. In my opinion, rather than separating portable gaming from consoles, it's necessary to continue thinking of portable gaming as one method to deliver more gaming experiences and exploring what our customers want from portable, Kadera said, before adding, we want to think about many options. Given the recent announcement that Sony will be ending production of physical Vita games and Sushi Yoshida's assertion in 2015 that he couldn't see there being a follow-up to the Vita that might seem this might seem surprising. However, it seems that Kodera is more interested in uniting mobile gaming with consoles. Rather than creating an entirely new separate handheld console based on what he's seeing here. When he, when he was asked about the approach Nintendo had taken with the Switch, Kodera's predecessor Andrew House said that PlayStation would be taking a different approach as he didn't think there was a great deal of potential in the handheld market for Sony. Kodera was less upfront on his view of the Switch with Bloomberg, but he made reference to Sony's recent experiments with PlayerLink, which allows players to use their smartphones to play a selection of games on their PS4. Sony's mobile game efforts haven't been particularly haven't been going particularly well, and its strategy in this area isn't especially clear. 
but hitching a mobile element to the PlayStation console star could be a profitable and successful move for Sony. Mobile games have come a long way in the past few years, and Fortnite's recent success has shown how console games can be ported effectively to mobile and a beneficial crossplay element that encourages people to continue playing. Given Codera has said PlayStation is considering many options, we wonder if there's a possibility his team is weighing up different benefits cross-platform games and games which allow players to use their phones as an input device offer. Sony has said that PS4 is coming that the PS4 is coming close to the end of its life cycle and the PS5 is expected within the next three years. What kind of handheld elements it will incorporate remains to be seen, but it seems that Sony has something up its sleeve. It just isn't likely to be a standalone handheld console. Interesting. Very interesting. So, who knows? More from John Codera, saying God of War has sold over 5 million copies within the first month. Fantastic! Sony was quick to celebrate the success of God of War surpassing 3.1 million copies in the first three days on the market. Wait, 3.1 million copies in the first three days? Not bad! While there hasn't been another official update since then, we might actually have one, and didn't realise it until now. Around, 550, around the 5.50 to 6.15 mark, the CEO of Sony Interactive Entertainment, John Codera's PlayStation report at Sony Investors Day, John mentions that God of War has sold more than 5 million copies since release on April 20th, 2018. God of War is truly one of PlayStation's biggest hits of any generation. Congrats to Sony and Santa Monica Studios. Now, here we go. I wonder how big uh, this Here's the contents of my presentation today. First of all, I'll... There are three points uh, to mention here. First of all, uh, further... Yeah, okay, okay, right, that's... Right. Wow. So here we go, more Pokemon Go news. Adventure Week for Pokemon Go started earlier today, well, when this article was written yesterday, and brought with it a variety of things for players to look forward to, like rock-type Pokemon appearing more frequently and earning more XP from gym and Pokestop photo disc spins. It now seems that some new shiny Pokemon have been added to the mix as well. From the sounds of it, five more shiny versions of Pokemon were added to Pokemon Pokemon Go for the event. Those happen to be Aerodactyl, Kabuto, Kabutops, Omanite, and Omastar. Some may remember them from Generation 1 Pokemon games as the Pokemon that had to be resurrected from different fossils. Ah, that episode Attack of the Prehistoric Pokemon, how's about that? A data miner by the name of Trails had initially broken the news and some lucky players confirmed it later after running into some of the shiny Pokemon in the game after the event went live. Of course there is a difference in appearance for each of these new shiny Pokemon to tell them apart from their non-shiny brethren. Aerodactyl has more of a purple hue to it as opposed to the normal grey colour. Kabuto and Kabutops have, their sh have shells that are green instead of the default brown. 
Last but not least, Omanyte and Omastar also have purple bodies, which are normally blue. Of course, Adventure Week isn't the only thing Pokemon Go players have to look forward to. As with other months, there will be a community day for, for coming up next month. That event is scheduled for June 16th, which is about three weeks away. It will focus on Lav Lavatar and the event exclusive move. The event exclusive move has already been leaked. Interesting. I shall get into that. So apparently the move has already been leaked. Uh... Smackdown. So Smackdown is the exclusive move that's going to be available for the community day. With the lure of new shiny Pokemon, increased XP gain and increased chances of finding and catching rock type Pokemon, Adventure Week should offer plenty for Pokemon Go players to... Oh, hang on. Players will also get a chance for another shiny Pokemon with the June Community Day in the form of the almighty shiny Tyranitar! <laughs> yeah, those shiny Tyranitars, they'll be fun to get. With the lure of new shiny Pokemon, new increased XP gain, and the increased chances of finding and catching Rock type, Adventure Week should offer plenty for Pokemon Go players to keep themselves busy. Let's not forget that the event will feature special raid bosses, and selected buddy Pokemon will earn candy at an increased rate. Selected body Pokemon. Hmm. Pokemon Go Adventure Week will run from May 14th until June the 5th. Pokemon Go is now available for Android and iOS devices. Nice. Oh, gives me gives me an excuse to get out and about again. <laughs> So, let's see. Forget Steam Sales. This new spring cleaning event rewards you for playing games you already have. Okay. Steam's Take Home Spring Cleaning is friendly to your wallet in more ways than one. Usually, Steam Sales are special events with unique rewards, all of which boil down to getting you to buy or at least look at a bunch of new games. But it would be wildly inaccurate to call Steam's brand new spring cleaning event a Steam Sale because it actually does the opposite. It wants you to play through all those old games you already own, and try out some new games too. Granted, but unlike the usual wall of insert percentage here off price tags, there are only nine of them, and they're all free for the weekend, today through to Monday the 28th. Okay, so let's have a look. Spring cleaning free games. Don't Starve Together, Dead by Daylight, City Skylines, Tyranny, Borderlands 2, Castle Crashes, that'll be fun, Shadows of Mordor, Left 4 Dead 2, and Dirt 4. Before we get much further, you should know that the reward you get for participating in all of this is, drumroll please, a Steam Profile Badge. But even if you don't typically care about that kind of thing, the overall event is much a much appreciated push for all of us to finally tackle games we've been meaning to try for years. There are daily tasks that reward you for trying out a random selection of free, ga of free games, a random set of games that you own, and one game that you own that you've never played. Assuming you have one. Then there are projects which you can tick off one by one throughout the whole event. My favourite projects are Another Chance, which challenges you to load up a game that you've logged less than an hour with, and Blast from the Past, which rewards you for playing the first game ever added to your Steam account. Ooh! I was pretty sure I knew which one that would be. So I checked the details, and yep, good old Half-Life 2. Though Counter-Strike Source, aka the awkward middle sibling of Counter-Strike, Half-Life 2 Deathmatch and Half-Life 2 Lost Coast were also options since they tied to the same purchase. 
I wonder what the Connor of 2004, who was mildly annoyed that he had to sign up for this Steam thing just to play Half-Life 2, would think about Connor of 2018's Steam library. Perhaps so he'd probably wonder why I still haven't played through the original Thief, and, well, that's a good question, past Connor. Maybe I'll clean that up this weekend. <laughs> Brilliant. So here we go. Next up. Last piece of news before we get into the points and trophies. PUBG on Xbox One gets Miramar map five months after its PC debut. Hope you like sniping! Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, most more affectionately known as PUBG, will finally let Xbox One players, whether they're known or not, fight to be the last one standing on the game's Miramar map. I say finally because Miramar has been available on PC for almost half a year at this point. Though, to be fair, it was only last month that it entered testing on Microsoft's console. Regardless, now everyone, everywhere, can enjoy blowing each other up across the desert horizon. There's not a whole lot to be said about Miramar itself. The new map is desert themed and includes a lot includes lost lots of vast open areas as well as small depot towns. But there are other additions to appreciate as well. For starters, there's the new R45 revolver, Windows uh, Win 94 lever action rifle and sawed off shotgun, as well as a six seater van and off road pickup truck to make traversing those big empty stretches a little less of a hassle. Players should also see some performance improvements once they've downloaded the update, with general stability enhancements to, re to reducing texture pop-up on building interiors and terrain. This build-up should run smoother than any, or any that comes before it. Last but not least, Two new pieces of cosmetic DLC have also launched alongside the Miramar map. The Golden Tracksuit, which is pretty much exactly what it sounds like, aka it does what it says on the tin. And the Instructor Set, which kind of looks like Scout's outfit from Team Fortress 2. Both are $4.99 and can be purchased from the in-game store. Get on them! Now, here we go. On to the last part of the set, uh, last part of the podcast today. Shorter than normal, given the uh, given the uh, news of the passing of Total Biscuit. Hope I'm doing you proud today, man. Anyway, points and trophies. As I, I say, no, no cheesy editing today. Apart from one or two things. But nevertheless, time to hunt those trophies. I say trophies because there's a big PS4 game that just came out today. In the form of Detroit's Become Human. And I'm going to go through the entire trophy list. Yep. The entire list, all 49 trophies. So here we go. Here we go, nothing to see here. Kara succeeded to make the cop go away. Bronze trophy. The rest, let's see. There we've got, let's see the, Got some, we've got some 30 plus bronze trophies, so here we go. Thank you. Play the first chapter. Burn the place. Marcus conducted a violent riot. Send a message. Marcus conducted a pacifist riot. A glimpse of Jericho. Connor connected to Simon. When a plan comes together, Marcus broadcasted his message without raising an alarm or having a team casualty. A smile on her face. Alice enjoyed a ride on the merry-go-round. Just a machine. Hank killed Connor. Jericho's hero. Marcus got enough parts. Doubts. The Traces escaped. Confrontation. Marcus attacked the police. 
ruthless, the Traces was killed. Saved Hank. That's what it says in the tin. Connor saved Hank. Catch it. Connor caught up with Rupert. Run, Kara, run. Kara and Alice escaped the police. Know your partner. Connor found all the clues about Blue about Hank. Shelter. Carter and Alice slept in the motel or the squat. Confession. Connor made the android confess. Self-control. Marcus let Leo win. Defend yourself. Marcus pushed Leo. Escape the manor. Kara and Alice escaped Zlatko's house. We are free. Kara and Alice escaped Todd's house. Stand your ground. Marcus stood his ground against the police. Kenship. Connor refused to kill the Chloe. Mission accomplished. Connor saved Emma. Secrets. Kara discovered the content of Alice's box. One of us. Connor became deviant. Compliant. Connor stayed a machine. Priorities. Connor killed the Chloe. Mission complete. Connor killed the leader of the deviants. An army of me. Connor converted the androids. My turn to decide. Connor resisted hacking attempt from Cyberlife. Escaped death. Kara and Alice escaped the recycling center. Moral victory. Marcus succeeded in making the soldiers stand back. Liberation. Marcus reached the camp and liberated the androids. Scorched Earth. Marcus or Connor detonated the freighter. Three at Jericho. Bring the three characters to crossroads. Bloodhound. Connor got the location of Jericho by himself. Safe Harbor. Kara and Alice passed the border. And the last bronze trophy. Deviant located. Connor found the Deviant in the attic. Next we have one, two, three, four, five silver trophies. Undefeated. Don't lose any fights before reaching the end. Bookworm. Find every single magazine in the game. Partners. Hank and Connor were friends to the end. Happy family. Kara, Alice and Luther are together at the end. I'll be back. Connor died and returned at every opportunity before reaching the end. Three gold trophies now. Survivors. Everyone is alive at the end. These are our stories. Spend 20,000 bonus points. This is my story. Finish the game once. Collect all those trophies. And you get the elusive platinum trophy. And some lucky son of a... Keep it clean. Some lucky sod managed to get a platinum already. Some lucky sod managed to get a platinum trophy already. Well, the dedication, I take my hat off to you, good sir. So there we are, that's that. That's this week's edition of the podcast. In memory of the late, great Total Biscuits. Hope you enjoyed what you saw today, folks. If you did, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to be baptized into following the channel, hit the subscribe button down at the bottom. Click the bell just on the Latter-day Saints notification squad so you don't miss anything I do on this channel. On the top left, marathon mode for Pac-Man World from yesterday. And on the right, my dedicated trophy achievement podcast playlist. Tomorrow, Tom and Jerry Sins will be back. Yes, they will definitely be back tomorrow. Don't you worry. In the meantime, I'll see you guys. I'll see you guys again very soon. Have a fantastic day. Peace out. Stay faithful. And rest in peace, Total Biscuit. You may be gone, but you will never be forgotten.